So here is my classic way of collecting and storing seeds is brown paper bags. I either reuse a, a wine bag or a grocery bag, whatever it might be. I use this for vegetables, for winter sowing, all sorts of things. And so I need to shell these green beans. These are the real thin French style Aricobea. And these are Kentucky Wonder, the really long string beans. We both like them young on the slender side to steam. Saving green bean seeds couldn't be any easier. You just let the bean pods ripen on the vine and get dry and hard just like this. And as long as they're an heirloom variety and they're not too close to any other beans, I had these two beans separated, then you should be good to go. They should be very similar to the open pollinated heirloom variety I started with. And this is the Kentucky Wonder. They were really long and nice and slender. And so then I just like to go through and make sure I didn't allow any bad seeds to go in. Let's see, that one here is not all the way formed. The rest of these look pretty good. And so if you find beans that you like, like I said, if they're an heirloom variety, you can save your own seeds. This would be what you'd find in a seed packet that would probably cost you 3 to $5. And I still have quite a few that I can share with friends. Hey folks, thanks for stopping by. Today I've got plans to direct sow several crops. Many crops do much better planted directly in the ground rather than started up early and transplant. They just do better if their roots are not disturbed. And so today I'm gonna to be planting some corn, green beans, um, root crops, and then I've got uh, some new methods I'm gonna try. I often have problems with cucumber beetles and squash bugs. So in with the zucchini, I'm going to be interplanting with radishes. Now we like radishes, so I'll plant extra for us to harvest. And then the rest you're supposed to leave in the ground. I assume some allelopathic chemical is supposed to help ward off squash bugs. So we're gonna try that method this year. And then I'm also going to grow cucumbers and pole beans, pole green beans together all along on the same trellis. Apparently they have a good symbiotic relationship. And so I thought I would try that combo this year um, and just a few other things. I like to rough up the leaf mulch just a bit. That aerates it and also prevents a, a, a barrier between the two layers that might prevent water from wicking through. All right, now that the soil surface is a little scuffed up, I can plant my corn and beans directly in the bed. What I like to do first is take the bottom end of my garden rake to make a few rows. I plant corn in blocks for better pollination. See, these are the two varieties I'm growing this year. Usually you don't plant corn at the same time because of cross pollination, but this one is 63 days and this one is 80 to 90 days. So I'm gonna give a shot. I'm gonna try planting them both at the same time. All right, I've got my bucket of compost and my fertilizer, which today is a Stoma Plantone, according to the package instructions. Seed depth is one to one and a half inches, a group of two seeds every 12 inches. And so I plant these much closer than recommended. Uh, I find that if I feed them well, this actually helps with pollination a little bit better. Also, I only use one seed at a time, and I often regret that later when I get poor germination. Add a little bit of fertilizer to each line. They are pretty heavy feeders. And then I'll cut 
cover them up with compost. soil and the mulch and cover them up. And the green beans, I'll just space about four to six inches apart in a row on the south side so that they do not get shaded by the corn. Green beans do not require a lot of fertilizer because they fix their own nitrogen. They have a symbiotic relationship with soil organisms that help them fix atmospheric nitrogen from the air into the soil and then it makes it bioavailable for the plants. Doing a row of Aricover, the real thin French green beans, which we love lightly steamed. Once again, I just loosen the soil with my garden rake, not too deep, and then create a furrow with the handle. And I'll add the green beans. I do not add fertilizer to green beans, but I will add a little bit of compost, cover them up, and then we'll water this whole bed in. I have a handful of carrots that I did not harvest. You can leave carrots in the ground over the winter, but I did not make it out here to harvest these. Sometimes they're still good. Sometimes they get ready to bolt and flower, but sometimes they're still good. So I'm gonna dig them up and see what I've got. Oh yeah, there we go. I've got some. They don't look too chewed up or anything, so I'm going to harvest these. Maybe we'll have some carrots for dinner. Now, sometimes these are tough and rough, and like this one, ugh, the top is gone and it's rotted out. It just started getting warm in this past week, so it's essentially been like a refrigerator. So I'm going to be doing a row of carrots and then also a row of other root crops, some beets, rutabaga, turnip, and so forth. And then in the back over here, this is the north side, I'm going to do a, a trellis for green beans, pole green beans, and cucumbers and let them trellis up. I want them on the north side so that they don't shade out these plants here. It's already pretty shady as it is. So I'm mixing some of the leaf mulch in with the top layer and kind of breaking down any large clods that I find. That way when I sow the seeds, everything will germinate pretty evenly. So when I plant in this manner, I like to just broadcast spread compost and fertilizer throughout the whole area. Then I'll lightly mix it in. And I will sow the seeds and gently cover them up with a little bit of the leaf mulch. I do not take the time to label all of these. I will just plant them in little sections where each group will be its own color. And then I'll just basically be a surprise when it comes time to harvest. It's crude, but in case a chicken gets into the garden, the fencing helps protect the seeds until they get going. I'll take it off as soon as they begin to germinate and grow a little bit. Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans and a couple of new cucumbers that I've not tried. So now I'll go through and take that back line of leaf mulch and move it forward. So I'm just going to lightly rake the fertilizer in that row. And so I'm just going to stagger every other planting, cucumber bean, cucumber bean, and then I'll add a layer of compost to cover them up and then put the leaf mulch back down over.
didn't quite get it in before the rain, but there's always tomorrow. So first I will do the two outer rows. I'll rake away the mulch, sow the seed, and put the mulch back over top of them. I recently read that radishes help repel squash bugs, which I usually have a big problem with. So I thought I would plant uh, quite a few around the plants. Apparently you have to leave the root in the ground. It must exude some allele chemical that deters the insects. Along the outside, I do two rows of radishes that we would eat. And then surrounding the squash in the center, I'll plant a lot of extras. And this netting is essential to keep out chickens in any riffraff. So I decided to sow edamame in this bed since there's lots of extra space. I just simply spread them out about every six to eight inches. Just doing a follow up on the direct sown seeds. Looks like the green beans are all up in this bed. In this bed, the small radishes are up, and looks like most of the squash are up as well. The zucchini is up in that one. We have yellow squash here, right out there in the center, it is up. And the radishes, I've planted all around them to hopefully help repel the squash bug. And in this bed, I sowed green beans and cucumbers in the back there. I don't see signs of any cucumbers just yet, but it looks like all the beans are up. Oh, I am seeing some of the cucumbers. There we go. Yes. So I just used three small fence poles to anchor the fence into the ground. Then I'm going to use these longer poles to provide more space for the pole beans and cucumbers to grow up if needed. I just like to lightly weave them through so that they're secured to the fence. So I weave it through once here at the top and then I also weave it through once here at the bottom. Hopefully we'll see how this, uh, this symbiotic relationship between, between cucumbers and green beans play out. Onions are a little beat up where I knocked over the fence. My bird protection. The garlic is growing, growing, growing. And the tomatoes looking good. Been harvesting lettuce and kale, spinach for meals. It's been a good growing season so far. some potting up today. Potted up some tomatoes and peppers for a friend. And I also started this new project here. I've grown tomatoes in buckets before, but this time what I did was put a layer of leaf mold, leaf compost from clippings that we collected at the end of last year when we did the, the bagging with our mower, leaves and grass clippings and we have plenty of extra. So I filled the bucket about halfway with that material. And then I put about half that in compost on top. And I added the tomato plants and then I just covered them with some potting mix. 
potting mix is pretty expensive these days. And so I like to, I usually cut it with about 50% compost and I thought I'd try even further with the leaf mold this year. So corn germination was a bit sporadic. So I think what I'll do is start another set. I'll soak them overnight, maybe even a day or two until they germinate. And then I'll transplant them out here. I do have some edamame starting to surface. A variety of root crops in this bed. In the middle, I sowed carrot seeds. They have not germinated just yet. And then in the back of the bed, I have pole beans interspersed with cucumbers. I also planted some marigolds today. They are great companion plants and help repel many pests. You can see a little bell pepper there. And then we have tomatoes on the A-frame with spare tomato cages all over the place to keep that girl out of here. That girl. I'll be training the tomato plants up the trellis pretty soon here at the A-frame. Still have to trim a few lower leaves off. Also planted marigolds in here. Roma San Marzano Amish paste. Roma that I saved from my garden last year. Back there. I grow all the tomatoes I can possibly fit in the garden. Which is why I started several in buckets today. Strawberries are amazing this year. All through here. Lots of little strawberries. It's a garlic forest. And stay tuned, the strawberries are coming on strong. And so I hope to have some harvest videos and, and different recipes. I'm making some strawberry jam and hopefully some other things as well. Anyway, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.